My name is Bridget Scanlon. I'm a nurse on Lunder 10. My name is Carrie Ann Fullman. My name is Carrie Chen. I am a nurse on Lunder 10, the hematology oncology bone marrow transplant unit. I've been an oncology nurse for a little over five years now. I'm Sarah Buckley. I'm an oncology nurse on Lunder 10 at Mass General. My name is Anna Farago, um, and I'm a medical oncologist. My name is Gabby Hobbs, and I am one of the leukemia doctors here at MGH. My name is Amanda Bedanza. I'm Allison Duran, and I'm running for my mom, Ann Duran. My name is Jessica Swenson. I'm Amanda's twin sister, and I'm I am running this year's Boston Marathon in memory of my brother-in-law, TJ Bedanza. And I'll be dedicating 26.2 miles for Kristen Polizotto. And all 26.2 miles of the Boston Marathon will be for you, Nick. All of my steps, all of my miles, I'm running for you, Joe. I'm running every step of this marathon for you, Dad. I'm running this marathon for my mom. I'm really excited to run for a patient that is really special to me. AJ is just such a genuine, honest, and just wonderful man. I met AJ when he was first diagnosed with leukemia. He's a 22-year-old who was training for um, the Navy while he was in Maine. He's originally from Alabama, and he wasn't feeling so well, which is not surprising considering that he was doing some really physical training. He had such a difficult course initially, and it was really sad to see that but he powered through and ultimately ended up going into remission with a clinical trial and that was just really like a modern day miracle to see. Some of my best memories from childhood were really sitting at mile 16 waiting for dad to run by and sitting there with a Gatorade or a banana to toss to him. Back in 2008, uh, 2009, starting to actually train for another marathon and uh, didn't feel very good about the way the training was going. I was very tired, didn't seem like I was progressing so I um, made an appointment and was diagnosed with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. She was, uh, she was very young, well I consider young, I think she was 53 when she was diagnosed with a endometrial cancer. At that time I was a medical student um, and resident. It really shaped for me kind of how I uh, thought about medicine, how I uh, thought about patients. Joe. Uh, was a patient here on Yonkey 8 this past year. He fought a battle with um, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma, and his ability to push through allowed him to walk my sister-in-law, Jess, down the aisle this past April to marry my brother, Sean. Kristen was diagnosed with lymphoma in 2015 at seven months pregnant. She underwent chemotherapy while she was pregnant and thankfully was able to deliver her beautiful son, Caden. Fast forward to the spring of 2019. While the Polizotto family thought the worst was behind them, Kristen was faced with the unfortunate news of the disease returning, attacking her central nervous system. I remember sitting next to Kristen on the hospital bed as we cried, hugged, and talked together for hours. My husband, TJ Bedanza, was diagnosed with colon cancer in 2011. He was treated here at Mass General for four years until he passed away in 2015. My mom was diagnosed with lung cancer and her treatment started during the times when COVID was just very rampant. So she had to go and face her journey, you know, without her family by her side. So she formed these amazing relationships with her team and, and nurses at Mass General. When she came back, she was really focused on this nursing team that she met and these earrings that she was able to pick out during her treatment. And you know, that's how we, we came to know Caring for a Cure and, and the mission of this amazing organization. I first met Nick in January of 2022 when he was admitted to Lunder 10 for his auto stem cell transplant. From the moment I met Nick, I felt like I had known him my whole life. Each shift I spent taking care of him was full of his storytelling, walking the halls with music, and yelling at whatever Boston sports team was playing on TV. The nurses and the doctors and the staff really, I think, connect with people um, on a personal level. And honestly, I think the nurses embody that better than anyone. He would go to appointments for transfusions and everything. Oh, this is my this is my time to relax. I'm going to see my nurses and my doctors. And It was a good experience. I actually was able to go there and, and kind of put my mind at ease. 
fact, he was admitted overnight and she received this flower arrangement, you know, that wasn't from us. And so there were these little just acts of kindness that just kept popping up. Giving back was always so important to him um, and he really valued fundraising. After he passed away, I started a paper flower business called AJB's, which allows patients that are being treated for cancer to have flowers in their hospital room. When it's a patient's birthday, when it's their last day of treatment, a bouquet of flowers, a new sweatshirt. Having the ability to gift my patients something, a gift card or a sweatshirt or a new pair of headphones, goes a really long way. It's such a hard job and it's, it's stressful and it's crazy hours, but what makes it worth it is those connections. Caring for a cure when you're there for almost 30 days, it's, it's a difference maker. Caring for a cure, I think, really kind of fill those, those real life gaps that patients have that are not covered by um, the medicines that we give. The nurses here at MGH are not like nurses anywhere else. Every opportunity that I have to support the mission of this organization is just something that I think is really special. We grew up going to the Boston Marathon every Patriots Day was go into the city and, and cheer on the runners. I saw Caring for a Cure post saying that they're looking for runners to apply for their marathon team. And I immediately thought of my mom she would have been so excited about this group and everything that they were doing. We always talked about me doing this race someday after watching it together so long. This is something I'm, I'm honored that I get to do and I get to do um, with her and for her. Working with Caring for a Cure inspired me to have the same courage, dedication to push through training. I've found on long runs when I'm struggling a little bit, my body's feeling tired, I think of him and um, it makes me realize you that. You think of me that much? Yeah, I do, actually do. <laughs> Nick, I knew I wanted to run the Boston Marathon for you because your fight against your disease was inspiring. The motivation that you had during your time on Lunder 10 is what will carry me from Hopkinton to Boylston on Marathon Monday. Dear Kristen, I have taken everything that you taught me about daily life, being a nurse, and I've taken that to my patients today, and I thank you for that, and we miss you so much. Every run is, is emotional, but I know you're there um, with me, and I know, I know you're always be with me. TJ, I'm running the Boston Marathon for you in your memory. Um, I miss you so much. I think about you every single day. I know when baby TJ is older, we can I can't wait to tell him all about this when he understands more. And if TJ were here, he would be so proud of you. Thanks. AJ, buddy, I'm very excited that I can run for you. And I know that that run is just gonna be so super special to be thinking about you. And um, I can't wait to see you. Your courage is always in the back of my mind. I can't wait to see your family cheering me on just like they cheered you on. And I just wanna say thank you and we miss you. A couple days before the surgery, she went out with her girlfriends to a restaurant and they all wore shirts that said, get the mother And they drank and laughed and totally had a party. And then she went in and had the surgery and got the mother And I'll think of her when I run the marathon because I think that kind of captures uh, that feeling of just having to kind of push through. And even though you're kind of miserable, <laughs> it's, also, it's also fun and it's also, you can find humor in it and you can find so much joy in it. We get together many mornings, like today at five o'clock in the morning, no joke. We were running outside in some very icy conditions, so. Yeah, I feel like I'm already like super emotional about it, so I'm probably gonna be like happy crying the whole time. Is that okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> this is gonna be the best gala of all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's have fun. <laughs> let's smile. <laughs>